We're being joined now on the news at 10 by the CEO of Financial Derivatives Company, Mr. Bismarck Rewane, uh, who has been closely monitoring the economic impacts of what's going on. And you do have a quote. So you say um, MPC thinks twice, that's about the CBN, and maintains status quo. What do you mean by that? Well, I think what the, um, the MPC did was to accept the limitations of monetary policy. What you have is a multi-dimensional problem um, called COVID-19 or what have you. And the way you evaluate policies is that there are three A's. The question is one, is it auspicious? Mm. Two, is it adequate? And three, is it appropriate? So we need to go back to understand that before now, that is Nigeria was, grew at 2.55% in Q4. Well, if you look at the, if you decompose the growth, mm. you'll find that most of the growth was propelled by oil. And now that left us fragile. Now, what has happened is that the monetary policy authorities have accepted that it is part of a combined, you know, that is a comprehensive mm -hmm. pro solution using fiscal and monetary tools. In the first place, we had a multi-dimensional problem. In one, the healthcare problem. Two, the trade and investment flows from Southeast Asia and China. Our biggest trading partners are China and India. Three is the effect of the plunge in oil prices from $63 all the way to $25. And then finally, the fiscal imbalances that this throws up. So what you have is a fragile economy, inflation increasing, and growth negative. Yeah. Having said that, what have the fiscal authorities done? They've done yeah. four major things. One, supplementary budget based on $30 a barrel give back to Nigerians 20, 20 naira per liter. That the total, the, comp, the aggregate 20 naira per liter on 60 million liters gives us about almost $1.2 billion. In addition to that, that was the, the petrol rebate. Mm. We also have 3.5 trillion naira of lending and intervention by the central bank and 2.35 trillion of credit growth. But if you take all of this together, then the impact is not enough to solve this problem because this problem is a problem that is, you know, basically multidimensional, but also it's happening at a time when all, all other countries are having the same thing. It is very unlikely and very unusual in the world for you to have supply shocks and demand shocks at the same time. But this time we have it. Supply shock because China is the largest exporter in the world and demand shock because you've closed down all the shops and airports and everything at the same time. Now, has this happened before? If you look at the slide, next slide, you'll find that Nigeria in 2008 had, was a large size economy. It had plenty of buffers. The reserves were $52 billion. The external debt was only $3 billion. The excess crude account had $15 billion. And the balance of trade was $43 billion. So to, to a large extent, on the left angle there, you find Nigeria was a size 22. So it was able to withstand shocks. In 2016, Nigeria had become a mid-size, had become a size 12, mm. and was able to withstand those shocks without total damage. Today, Nigeria is a size 8. The, its ability to withstand those shocks is very limited. Therefore, all hands, all hands have to be on deck. Now, this virus has three dimensions. One, it's mild. Two, moderate. And three, severe. Our call is that this is going to be a mild attack, which means that you will have about 2,000 infections, some kind of some, some casualties, and that probability is there. If it goes to moderate, then you will have 50,000 infections. If it goes to severe, then you are talking about 500,000 infections. Okay. Now, if I, let me go and deal with how it will impact yeah, the individual. Because, because all of these measures that the CBN has announced uh, to the common man on the streets, um, yeah. you need to understand <clears throat> how it affects the price of Gary and rice. Right. So we looked at, f in all, we looked at seven items. Four of them increased. In the last week, because of the panic buying and people thinking that the markets are going to close, tomatoes went up by 50% from 6,000 to 9,000. Rice stayed flat at 27,500. Pepper went up by 25% from 8,000 to 10,000. Indomie stayed flat at 2,000. But Gary went up by 3% from 8,900 to 9,200. 
But because the market's about to close, and even though we say food is exempted from it, we expect to see more panic buying. The average inventory the Nigerian stores carry usually at about 90 days. Because of panic buying, people have bought and stockpiled, and therefore that inventory level has dropped to about 30 days. And further panic buying, you begin to see shortages. Mm. The airports are closed, the roads, you know, the borders are closed, so you're gonna see more of that. Now, what does this mean in the final analysis? Because it, we assume a mild to moderate scenario, mm. what you're gonna see is that by April, Airports will be reopened, yeah. factories will be reopened, schools will be reopened. I mean, at, that's at the end of April to June. Yeah. Borders will be reopened and local markets will be open. F growth will be flat to negative. Inflation will be up before falling and unemployment will rise. But in the, in the road to recovery will be short but rough. The truth is that we have had, we, we are going to avoid what we call a hard landing, but there's a lot of work to be done. So. A lot, of, a lot of patience on the part of um, Nigerians. Patience, so and say. basically, the leadership team have to be given a chance to do what they have to do, yeah. and they have to establish some credibility with, with the followership. Mr. Best Makrawadi, a pleasure having you here on the News at 10. Thank you very much for having me.